It is the last tournament in a tea break. Uh, it is the end of a long season for me, Ros Sattel. And George Belshaw. And we have, well, have we just seen a changing of the guard? No. Oh, okay. Well, that's <laughs> the end of that. No, I, Alexander Zverev played another blinding match. Yeah. He defeated Novak Djokovic in straight sets. I don't think anybody saw that coming. No, no. I think that's fair to say. No, that is fair to say. I mean, look, Novak's been going on about this cold for the last three or four weeks, and there have clearly been some days where he's feeling quite crap and other days where he's not. But, you know, that said, Zverev couldn't couldn't have played a much better match, regardless of how Novak was feeling. And you still, you know, it's the same with actually Hachinov in Paris. You you still have to play at such a high level to compete with Novak and a cold. Never had a cold against Zverev in the group stages of beating four and one. Yeah, it was a great, great performance from Zverev. But it, but let's not get ahead of ourselves <laughs> because you know this guy's got a long way to go. You know, it's very easy. Every time he's won a Masters title, we thought, right, the next slam is going to be yeah. the one. This is the step up from the Masters title. This is as big a title he can win. He's beaten Federer, then beaten Djokovic. Yeah. Huge. Now shows you can do it yeah. at the slam. And I mean, it's interesting that uh, somebody pointed out on my on my timeline. I tried to sort of get him to expand, but it, it, but he didn't. Um, about the impact of his father, because his father is the one that actually sort of moulded the way he was. But there can also be that kind of tepidness that if you if you're with a parent for too long, you don't really move forward. And I, I think there are advantages to brought Lendl on, um, and I, I think we're beginning to see that because I mean, he, he hinted it that. Um, that Lendl had watched the four and one and given him a lot of tips and that and the combination of beating Federer I think showed but um, but yeah you know it's going to be interesting to see how that dynamic dynamic actually works yeah I think you know there's, there's never been that much missing from Zverev's game there's he's obviously a very very good player he's obviously in my opinion head and shoulders are above the other young guys coming yeah. through in terms of a maturity beyond his years and that belief he's already there to beat them all. Sissi Pass has shown that a little more this year, but this has been his first season on the tour. There'll be a lot more downs yeah. and there will be ups, I suspect, for him. The more how like Shabovalov's experienced this season. Mm. I, I expect, you know, it's not always going to be this lovely upward oh. trajectory, but, um, and Zverev's had a few downs this year as well. It's not that's not to say they've been shocking downs he's always stayed around about the top five but it, there's been reality checks along the way and at the slams that's where he's kind of really been shown up a lot of the time um, Yeah. so as you, you're right with his father he's had a really great base and, and with his brother as well don't forget it's really useful to have when you're a young kid trying to come up a professional tennis player sure. to practice week in week out you know that's a that's a great benefit mm. for a young kid to have um then he's had Jez Green, and we shouldn't underestimate the yeah. physical changes he's going through. He's been going on about all year. I remember him going on about it in Madrid. He'd been had a great off season. He was boasting about how much he was lifting. I was like, "All right, sure, mate. You don't look very big." <laughs> Come the end of the season, it's showing. It's showing. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. Got a lot more weight behind that ball, particularly the serve. And he's saying he's not done anything particular to change it. He might. That may be true. There might be a slight technical change that he's not willing to go into. But you know the power he's getting behind that shot is now a, a serious bloody mm. weapon and if you're serving above 130 miles an hour getting 80 percent or whatever it is of first serves in which it was doing for yeah. a long period in that match today it's going to take a lot to beat you or at least to break you yeah. and you're going to get tie breaks so you know the question is where's this serve at the slams that serve hasn't yeah. turned up yet at slams yeah i don't know if that's because there's not like an indoor hard court slam or something but you know or maybe yeah. the slam courts are a bit slower but you know they're speeding up Australia that's a slam I'm expecting him to make a bigger impact and it can it can be viewed at times as indoors because they'll shut the roof for heat and they'll shut the roof for, for monstrous rain and for Federer and for, <laughs> and for Federer um, so I mean it was interesting because Djokovic was full of praise which he, he generally is yeah, um, loser, again, um, and he was saying that uh, you know he expects that in the fullness of time Zverev could surpass him. Now, I think that that's perhaps a little ambitious because I see Zverev, Zverev I see Djokovic potentially catching, equaling or, or maybe going past Federer. 
So that's a lot to put on young shoulders. And when you asked him the question, he was like, oh, Jesus, oh, my God, <laughs> and, and laughed it off. But, um, but that, that's still a lot of pressure. Uh, but based on this performance, do you see him rather than team, for example, as the first to get a slam? Is that, the first is very difficult to say because there could be a, just a completely random one. I think if like, Rafa was missing on clay and Novak yeah. wasn't there for a reason, I think Team's the man who will win a slam first of that group. Okay. But you know that that's if Rafa's gone. You yeah. Know what I mean, I think Novak next. So you think year, Team would win on clay? So I think but Team not... would win on clay aside from sure, those two. Sure, sure, I agree with that. Um, but I think Sasha's growing to become it's, it's less obvious where Sasha would win his worst Grand Slam I think he's more rounded than team he's probably the most rounded of all the youngsters Do you know I would say um, the US Open that seems to be the most unpredictable it, it is the most unpredictable I, I prefer him on a faster hard court than a slower one personally. so you think Australia so I think Australia possibly. well okay so Austra- Wimbledon. Well, well, so Australia and the US seem to be Quite unpredictable because it depends on who's had that good base of a of a of a, se- of a thing as well. I mean, he came in. I think he came in last year a little bit undercooked as well. I mean, he played Hopman Cup and he was an absolute disaster. Mm. Um, with all with, with all fairness, Andy I mean, Chung played a great match as well. To be fair, but yeah, but, but but also he admitted at the Hopman Cup that he was still that was that was his final year of training that year his final week of training block. So that was you know that was why he was just all fingers and thumbs and Angelique could pretty much had to carry him through the whole thing. Now, if he gets a decent training block um, behind him, it will be interesting to watch. I know that people turn their noses up at Hoffman Cup, but actually, you know, he did. He did. I think he got a win over Federer in there, in there as well. And he has, certainly has done before. So, this year or last year, but. so yeah, I, I don't know. I, Australia is one of those ones that you can, you can throw up a surprise. Uh, Novak's winning Australia. You think? As far as I'm concerned. Okay, so let's have a quick. Uh, Novak's done. Let's have a Novak's winning all four next year. You you <laughs> think he'll do? A, you think he'll actually do a calendar slam? No, I don't know. I mean, look, the only match I see being competitive in the slams next year is Novak Rafa. I still think Zverev's a tier behind Djokovic when he's fully fit and ready. Okay, I, th- I, I think I'll go out on a limb and say that I see Zverev actually making it to the second week of all four. Yeah, I mean. He still can get shot by someone. You never know. He might draw Murray in the first round of one of them. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Imagine. Uh, no. but overall, what do we what, what do we think of this week? Of this week? Oh, yeah. Just in general, what, what do we... Uh, compared to last week, where we had, like... Last week, not week. Last year, where we had, like, all kinds of odds and sods. What do we think this tournament gave us? Yeah. It, was, it, it came in for a bit of criticism for the kind of one-sided matches, mm. a lot of them. And I think it wasn't didn't really kick into gear until the weekend but the weekend's been brilliant I mean yeah there have been two really standout performances from Zverev there was a standout performance from Djokovic in there but following the Zverev Federer match that almost paled into yeah. insignificance to be honest um, and because of how well Djokovic had played it was just like man routine go on um, but for Zverev to then come out and beat Djokovic like that today was just, I just didn't see that coming not no. really um so, I, I'm, I'm struggling to find any pundit that did see that coming, actually. I mean, um, the Sky team put up their thing, and it was all Djokovic and two, every single one. Yeah. I mean, I thought it was going to be a tight two. I, I said three. <laughs> when, when he got the first set, I was like, yes. come. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, you know, just going back to him on slams, I think I've always said, and uh, I maintain this, I think he's, he will win a, at least five or six. Yeah. I do believe that. Um, no, I, I can see that. But the question will be, how much does everyone develop around him? Will he... Because he's a level above all of them at the minute. But he'll opinion. raise the bar and everybody will lift to, to follow. Hopefully. Or we could just have a period where, you know, Federer was above the likes of mm. Robic and all that. That could... We could have a good set of players around him, but not necessarily the, the glorious three-way battle of three guys yeah. who are just so much better than the rest. So... You know, Zverev, if he doesn't encounter those sorts of rivalries, could either steamroll everyone or lose motivation and not develop to the level yeah. he could. So it's a two-way battle. But I, I think my six is being pulled closer to eight already after this week. Your six? My six slams I'd okay, got had you. in my head. Got you. I'm saying to you can eight. win eight. I'm pulling it to eight. Goodness but, me. you know, there, there needs to be a long, 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 long improvement in Grand Slams next year and I mean 
I want him at the quarters in every single one. Yeah. No, and no, I no. want him at the final in one. And, and to be fair, I think if he doesn't make the quarters of every single slam, Lendl will walk because Lendl's not there to make up the numbers. Lendl was there specifically to get um, to get Murray over the line and get get his uh, get his slams, and he did, and a gold medal as well to boot. Um, two gold medals, I think, actually. Yeah. So it was interesting actually earlier in the week. Zverev had kind of said, "You'll see the Lendl effect next summer." Yeah. Uh, I thought that was an interesting comment that he's given. Yeah. Already views six months the time we'll start seeing it well I think we've started seeing it yeah. this week personally so I think so you know maybe he'll be surprised pleasantly surprised well, how much he'll improve well good times thank you so much for joining me this week That's it's okay. been a pleasure it's been a great all well, season actually it's been very interesting yeah. um, and hopefully we'll be able to get together in Melbourne yes to do Fingers more crossed. of the same Thank you guys for listening to us uh, on and off over the course of the year. We do appreciate it. You have been listening to Ross Satoff from Britwatch Sports. And George Belchill from Metro.co.uk. We'll see you in 2019.